In this video, we're going to learn how to create the top five most frequently used game mechanics using the module Pi game. We're talking about mechanics like jumping, moving, a scrolling background. So all these mechanics that you're going to use in pretty much any game you create. So let's start off with place number five, which is the scrolling background. Over in the editor, I have a blank Pi game skeleton. All that it does is create a black window with nothing inside. All that there is is an import of Pygame, then I've initialized Pygame, I've set up the Pygame clock and the window. In addition to that, I've also created one function called quit game, which allows us to quit the window whenever we press on the red X at the top right hand corner of the window. And last but not least, I have the main loop. To create the scrolling background, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to import the background image. After I've done that, I'm going to transform the background image to fit it to the window that we've created. Next up, I'm going to create a variable called width and set it equal to the width of the background image. Then I'm going to create a variable called offset and set it equal to zero. This is going to be the running variable which moves the image along the x-axis. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set an initial background image. Now this is the very first image that we see as soon as we launch the game. I'm going to set the x position equal to the offset and then the y position is simply going to be zero. Next up is the looping mechanic and it takes care of two things. First, it generates new images and second, it moves the images over our screen. So here we're first going to create an image which is just on the right hand side of our initial background image. Then we're going to add an if statement which is going to check if the offset variable is equal to the negative width of the image. Because whenever that is the case, we know that the background image which we've generated has moved across our canvas. And whenever that happens, we want two things to happen. First, we want to generate a new image and we also want to set the offset equal to zero. And below that, just outside the if statement, we're going to be decrementing the offset by one unit. And now once we run this, you'll see that the background is looping and it will go on like this forever. Okay, so let me briefly sketch out what is happening over here. We're going to have this small black square and this is going to be our screen. And this is exactly the empty screen that opens up when we ran the code at the very beginning. So it is just a black screen with nothing inside. Now what's going to happen is that we have a image and the image is going to be uh, in red. This is going to be our initial image. So let me draw in this initial background image. I'm going to write inside here, I am image one. Okay, so this is the very first image that we're drawing on the screen. And at the same time, we also said we want to draw a second image, which is just outside of the screen. So it scrolls into view when we wait for a moment. So this is going to be the image two. Now, the longer we wait, the longer the images have time to move across our screen. So let me go ahead and um, draw an, the next moment. So um, uh, the further down we go over here, the longer we've waited. So this is our time axis. So after a bit of time has passed, the first image will have moved slightly off of our screen right? The image is going to be over here. And the second image will have moved on to the screen. So it's going to look something like this. This is going to be image one, and this is going to be image two. Now, if we wait even longer, the first image will have moved even further. So at the very end, we're going to have a situation where the first image will be entirely off of the canvas area 
And the second image will be right on point within the canvas area. So this is our image one and this is our image two. So the next thing that will happen is we said that in the if function we check if the offset is equal to the negative width of the image. And that is exactly the case in this scenario over here. So that means that in this case, we are generating a new image just off the screen right over here, image, image three. And that, this is when the first image is discarded and this process goes on and on. So we start again with the process from the very beginning. And this is how the looping mechanism works in this example. All right, so now that we've covered the moving background, I want to jump to place number four. And that one is going to be going to character animation. As we did with the scrolling background, we're going to start off with a blank canvas. And this time we're going to be importing some slightly different images. We're going to be taking the images of a bird. So there are three images of this bird and each image has the bird with a different wing position. Now, if we show these images in sequence, then we'll see that the bird looks animated. So how can we show these images sequentially to make the bird look animated? So first off, as I mentioned, we're importing the images of the bird. Next, we're going to create a class called bird, which inherits from Pygame sprite.sprite. Within the init method, we're first going to initialize the super class. Then we're going to set self.image equal to the first bird image. We're going to set self.rect equal to the rectangle of the image. We're then going to set the center of the rectangle equal to 500 and 250. And we're also going to create the variable image index and we're going to set it to zero. Then we're going to create an update method and this method is going to be taking care of the animation. So within this method, we're going to increment the image index by one. And then we're going to check if the image index is larger than or equal to 30, in which case we're going to reset the image index to zero. After that, we need to set the image that we want to display on our canvas. As you can see here, I'm referencing the bird images and the index of the image is going to be equal to the image index floor divided by 10. Now the floor division by 10 simply divides by 10 and then rounds down. So that means if the image index is between 0 and 9, we're displaying the image with the index 0. If the image index is between 10 and 19, we're displaying the image with the index 1. And if the image index is between 20 and um, 29, we're displaying the image with the index 2. Just above the main loop, we're going to instantiate the bard. So we're going to set the variable bard equal to pygame.sprite.groupsingle. And to this group single, we're going to be adding an instance of the class bard. And then in the main loop, we're going to draw and update the bard. So on the bard, we're going to call the function draw. And we're going to pass in the window uh, into the draw function. Then below that, we're going to call the update function on the bird. Now you can see that when I run this, we have the bird, which is flapping its wings, and we've animated this bird character, which we can use in our game. Next up, we're going to be moving to place number three, a truly popular pie game mechanic that you need in every game, which is movement. As always, I'm going to start with a blank canvas with nothing inside of it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define X and Y coordinates of the square, which we're going to create, which is going to be what we're moving around our screen. So here the X and Y coordinate are both going to be equal to 250. In addition, we're going to set the velocity in the X direction equal to 10. In the main loop, the first thing we're going to add is the rectangle. Here we need to pass in a couple of arguments. First, we're going to pass in the window within which we want to draw the rectangle. Then we're going to pass in the color 
and these are RGB values. In this case, the values over here make the color black. And the final thing we're passing in is a Pygame game rectangle. Now that we have the rectangle taken care of, we're going to make sure that the movement works. So we're going to first create a variable called user input and set it equal to pygame.key.getPressed. And if the user input is equal to the left key on the keyboard, then we want to subtract the velocity x value from our x coordinate. Similarly, if the user input is the right key on the keyboard, then we want to add the velocity x to the x coordinate. If we execute this code at this stage, you'll see that whenever I press the right key on the keyboard, the small box moves to the right, and when I press the left key, the box moves to the left. So now that we've taken care of movement, let's move on to place number two, which is collisions in Pygame. Since we just learned how to create a moving rectangle, we're going to build on this code to create another rectangle which our moving rectangle can crash into. So under the rectangle we created in the move script just a moment ago, we're going to create another rectangle. So we're going to write pygame.tra.rect and we're going to be passing in a couple of arguments. And this rectangle is going to be stationary, so we're not going to be moving this one. Then comes the if statement which checks for a collision. So we're going to write if pygame.rect.collideRect and then we're going to be passing in as arguments into the collide rect function the two rectangles that we created above. And if this statement returns true, so if a collision between the two rectangles is detected, then we want to draw the rectangle that moves in red. And that's all there is to it. So if we go ahead and run this now, you will see that I have the moving square and whenever I collide into the stationary rectangle, the square turns red. As you can see, checking for collisions with the collide rect function is very simple. And now moving on to place number one, perhaps the most popular Pi game mechanic that people have trouble with and that I get tons of questions on is jumping in Pi game. And here we're going to take the moving script, which was on place number three, as the basis for our jumping script. We're going to start by adding the velocity in y direction. And we're also going to be adding a jump variable, which at the beginning is going to be set to false. And within the main loop, under the code which is responsible for moving the rectangle, we're going to add the logic that is responsible for the jumping. First up, we're going to create an if statement, which is going to check if the jump variable is equal to false, and if the user input is the spacebar. And if the statement returns true, we want to set the jump variable to true. Below that, we're going to add another if statement, which checks if the jump variable is true. If it is in fact true, then we want to subtract the velocity in y direction multiplied by 4 from the y coordinate. In addition, we want to slow down the speed of the jump by subtracting 1 from the velocity in y direction. So to check that the jump has been completed, we're going to add another if statement, which is going to check if the velocity in y direction is smaller than negative 10. And if that is in fact the case, then we're going to set the jump variable back to false, and we're going to set the velocity underscore y variable back to 10 as it was initially. And once we execute this code, you can see that whenever I press the space bar, I jump up on the screen. All right, so these were the top five game mechanics that you're going to be using in pretty much any Pi game uh, game that you create. So if this helped you out, then make sure to leave a like underneath and make sure you leave a comment for the algorithm and see you in the next video.